Hi guys, welcome. Today we are painting our happy campers painting, uh, date night style. So um, let's get this started. So for this painting, you wanna make sure you have the basic variety of colors. We got a red, yellow, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, white and black, all our primaries. Um, and for your canvas, you want a fairly square composition. So if you are doing this date night style, you have two rectangles. I recommend 10 by 20. So two of those and you should be good. If you're painting this on your own, a decent square shape is good enough. So I'm going to divvy up my canvas into two um, to represent both sides of the painting if you are doing a date night style. If not, don't worry about it. Um, either works. So another thing that you guys are going to need for this painting is you want to make sure that you have three brushes. You have a large flat, a medium sized either bright or filbert, and a small round. Also, to get started we're going to do some sketching with a pencil. So you want to make sure you have a just nice decent basic graphite pencil and we're going to sketch out our horizon line first. And I want to aim about a quarter of the way up from the bottom or three quarters of the way down. And we're just going to make a flat-ish line. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be flat-ish. And if you make a mistake, you can always erase it. There's nothing wrong with that. So once I got that line in there, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my tent. So if you are on the tent side, um, you want kind of like a roundish triangle. Like it's still going to be pointy at where the sides meet, but the sides are going to be rounded a little bit. So it makes like a dome tent. And once I have that sketched in there, I'm going to erase any stray lines that I have, as well as erasing the horizon line that kind of goes through the tent. And then I'm going to draw one more tent kind of further off in the distance. So it's gonna be smaller and kind of placed a little bit higher than the first tent. And I'm going to want to clean up those lines as well. And don't forget that horizon line that goes through. All right. So now I'm just going to re-sketch in some of my lines just to make them a little bit more permanent. And so they'll show up a little bit better. But once you got your tents in there, if you are working on the left side of the canvas, we're going to add in a kind of teardrop shape for the fire pit. And you don't want it too large, otherwise you're going to have more of a forest fire instead of a bonfire. But you also want to make sure you erase that horizon line in it as well. So now that you have your tents and your fire drawn out, we're going to start with our large flat brush. He's large and flat. And I'm going to get him wet first. And we are going to mix a mixture of white and our cobalt blue. So this is kind of like the lighter blue. And once you have a little bit mixed, then what we're going to do is we're going to mark out where our sky is. And I like to kind of have like more towards the bottom of the valley, a little bit on the right side of the canvas. But if you want to place it in another direction, that's fine. But we want to make a large V. Get a little bit more, come up further on the right side. So we have a nice large V. And I'm going to start in that little crevice of the V and we're just going to kind of start filling it in and I'm not going to fill in the entire thing. I just want to fill in a good chunk of it. And I'm using more of like uh, an X like stroke, 
but you can stroke it however you prefer as long as you're kind of filling in those little white holes on your canvas. That way you get nice and even coverage. So once you get that little section filled in, you're going to give your brush a really good rinse out and we're gonna go in with just the cobalt this time, so no white added. And I'm gonna start outside of that cobalt and white section and just kind of create a nice band with the cobalt. And then I'm going to kind of work it into the cobalt and white. That way we get a nice gradient. And the cool thing about these videos is you can pause them as you go. If I'm moving a little too fast, I'll still be here. So just go ahead and pause it and keep working. But once you kind of get that band filled in, um, you'll probably notice that I have two segments right now and they're not really blended. So if you find that that is happening, you can always go back in with the cobalt and white just to kind of help blend that area in. So I'm going back in cobalt with white and I'm just kind of going between the two colors. That way they just start mixing together on your canvas. Nice. And now I'm just giving my brush a really good rinse off and making some like little touch up spots. If you go a little too hard, with that cobalt and white, you might have to go back in with the cobalt. It's just kind of like touch and go. But I'm going to rinse my brush off here. And the next color that we're going to go into is a little bit darker. We're going to go into that ultramarine blue. So that nice dark blue that we have. And I'm going to just go ahead and fill in the remaining bit of my canvas. And just like I did before, I'm just starting above my section and kind of bringing it in so it blends in. And if you feel like you went a little too hard with that ultramarine blue, you can go back in with some cobalt to tone it out a little bit, but you're still trying to get like that nice gradient. So it's just going to look like your dark blue is slowly turning to the light blue. Also, as you guys are filling this in, you can wrap it around on your edges as well. That way you get a nice kind of completed painting when you do finish. And here in a bit, you'll probably see me flip my canvas up to kind of take care of those edges a little bit better. But once I got that ultramarine blue in there, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one step darker. I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and black and mix them. So a little black, some of that dark blue, We're making an even darker blue now. And I'm just coming in on those corners and bringing in that color. If you go a little too far with this, you can always go back in with that ultramarine blue to help kind of tone it down. But just remember you want it to kind of blend in like your brush is kind of running out of uh, paint, kind of like a printer would. So you just kind of keep blending until it runs out and that helps it kind of mix in. So I'm just blending this in and just like as I was talking about earlier, I'm coming in, taking that dark black and blue mixture and I'm wrapping it around on my, on my edges. And I'm even going to flip up my canvas. That way I can reach that top edge and wrap it around. And I always find that it's good to do it as you go. That way you don't have to constantly remix your colors. Because every time you remix the color, it's never exactly the same as it was when you first made it. So it's a little different each time. So it's good to just wrap it around as you go. 
All right, so now I'm coming back in and I'm just touching up some areas that I feel like I need to blend a little bit better or, you know, touching up some areas. Um, if you are completely happy with your sky and you're like, all right, I'm done touching it, that is completely fine. If you're happy with it, then let it be. Um, but if you still feel like it needs a little work, go ahead and keep you know, blending and get it to that happy place. But sometimes we have to tell ourselves to just let it be. Um, otherwise, we can get stuck trying to blend things forever. <laughs> so um, once we kind of have that in there, then I'm just rinsing off my brush. And I'm going to start working on my mountain sides. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to use that black and dark blue mixture that we are using to darken up our sky. I'm just mixing up some more of it. And in order to get that nice silhouette of our hillside, we want it kind of on the dark side, but we don't want it black. Otherwise, our other stuff will not pop off. So I'm going to start below the sky just a little bit just to kind of start filling in the area. But I want to slowly kind of turn my large brush so I kind of use that nice sharp edge and it's kind of angled vertically and I'm just kind of flicking up and it's very important that you're just flicking up versus pulling down because if you flick up you're going to get those nice little tips whereas if you pull down it's going to give you like a thick tip and we want the nice little tips to kind of give the illusion of trees. At first it might look like grass. That means you're doing it correctly. You just want to make sure you're filling them in so they're nice and close together versus sparse and far apart. So I'm just quickly filling it in. And I'm also going to, to take going to take that color and like bring it down a little bit, kind of close to my campsite area. And I'm a little bit sped up here, but that's just so you know, it kind of gives you time to see on both sides. Painting two at once can sometimes be a little difficult. Um, so, you know, date night kind of splits the work. So once I have that lined, as you can see, I'm bringing it down. And as I bring it down, I kind of resort back to kind of like those little X strokes, just to kind of get it nice and filled in evenly because you want to fill in all those little white holes on your canvas because your canvas is kind of like a waffle and you can't have those tasty waffles without having butter and syrup in all of the holes. I'm also wrapping this color around on the edges as well just to keep it going as I go. All right so once I got it fairly filled in, I'm going to rinse out my brush just to get all that dark paint out and do a nice little dry. And I'm going to come back in and I'm going to come back in with the ultramarine blue, not with the any black in it this time. So just ultramarine blue and I'm coming in a little bit closer to my fire and my tents. But I also want to make sure it blends back into that darker color. I kind of stay a little close and just leave a little bit of a gap and then pull it back into that dark. So once I have it blended in, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my ground area because as you can see, I'm just kind of staying up in those mountains. And when I come into that ground area, I'm going to work in a similar order. I'm going to start with that dark blue and black mixture. And if you need to, you can remix as you go. And the trick with working in this ground area is you want to keep your brush strokes flattish. You don't want them going crazy directions. We want nice kind of horizontal strokes. That way it kind of helps keep that ground flat. Okay, 
in a little bit more paint and I'm just nice horizontal strokes and it can be a little bit streaky and strokey that's fine because as long as we're kind of filling in the holes we are good and just like we did in our mountain area you kind of want to give a little bit of space to your fire and your tents and then we just kind of slowly creep in and don't forget to wrap around on the edges as well so once i got some of that filled in i'm gonna do just like what i did up top i'm gonna go in with the ultramarine blue so I want to give my brush a really good rinse out after this. Once I get those edges painted. All right, so I'm rinsing out my brush and now I'm going to go in with that ultramarine blue by itself just like I did up top. So a little ultramarine blue, and just remember we wanna keep our strokes nice and flat. So I'm kinda of keeping it horizontal. And I'm just moving in a little bit closer to my fire and my tents. And it's okay to overlap it into the darker area because we also want this kind of blended a little bit. And in the event that you happen to go a little too far, it's okay because we can adjust later. So I'm just kind of blending things in. All right, so I'm cleaning off my brush and I'm gonna swap brushes. So for this next step, I'm using a kind of medium sized bright. You can also use a filbert that will work just as well, but just a medium sized brush. And I'm going to go in with kind of like this orange color, but we don't have any orange, so I'm gonna mix it. So I'm gonna use yellow and red. We're gonna mix a nice orange, and you wanna make sure you mix enough. That way, you know, you don't have to keep remixing it. So I'm mixing a good amount. And I'm going to take a little bit of this orange, and I'm going to mix it with some of my burnt umber. So it's kind of brown. So I'm adding in a little bit of brown. And this is almost right. And you can adjust as need be. So if you feel like it's a little too yellow, add a little bit more red. If you feel like it's too red, add a little bit of yellow. But you want to get kind of like a nice warm brown. And once you get a brown that you're happy with, then what we're going to do is we're gonna start filling in uh, the remaining white space. I'm still leaving the fire and the tents open, but I'm just kind of moving even closer to them. For the fire, I wanna leave a little bit of a gap, but for the tents, you can get nice and close. And as I'm up in the mountains, I'm using those kind of like little flick strokes to kind of give a uh, a nice kind of painterly feel and you can overlap into your blue. I'm keeping it a little bit more condensed as it's closer to the fire and the tents and as I move out into the mountainy area I'm just kind of letting it disperse a little bit more and be a little bit more separated. So as I get 
the mountain area filled in, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same color and I'm going to start working on the ground. And just like before, we want nice flat strokes, even though you get nice and close to the fire and the tents, you want, still want to keep your strokes roughly flat. And I'm just overlapping into those blue areas. So if you feel like you went a little far with some of that blue, this is how you kind of disguise it and take a little bit of it away. I'm going to leave just a little bit of space around my fire, just kind of like I did up at the top. But as far as the tents go, you can kind of get nice and close. And one of the things that I find that helps is if you hold your filbert or your bright, so he's kind of uh, horizontal, so skinny side is horizontal, and you kind of move skinny side with the strokes, kind of keeps it nice and streaky. Usually I'll turn it the other way when I'm ready for blending. I use the thick side for blending, but if I want more defined lines, I use the skinny side to lead. And now I'm kind of like merging between the ground and our sky area. So I'm just adding some additional hints and flicks around the campsite. And once I get it to a happy place, the next step is completely optional. It's up to you whether you want it or not. If you choose to omit it, then um, it's more like your campsite is in a clearing. But if you do choose to do this, this gives it the look like you have um, a good forest around your campsite. So I'm doing nice straight lines and I kind of want to make sure that my tip is nice and sharp and I want to angle the skinny side of my brush up and down and vertical so I can pull up and give the illusion that you can see tree chunks kind of lit up by the lights. And it's one of those things that it looks weird at first, but as the painting finishes up, it makes a little bit more sense. But it's completely up to you whether you want to have that or not. You can have a bunch, you can have a little. That is your choice. And something that's important to keep in mind is you want to make sure that you're definitely pulling up. You don't really want to pull down, otherwise you're not going to have a nice tapered top. And because the further away you move away from your light, it's going to not be as strong, so you're not going to really see that entire lit up surface. So as I add in these trees, I'm going to also make sure I'm blending in towards the bottoms just so they're part of the overall glow. But once I have those trees in there, I'm just going to give my brush a really good rinse out. And for this next step, we're going to fill in those other little spots close to our fire mainly and a little bit of our tents. So I'm going to blend together some yellow and red to make a bright orange, this time without brown, because as we move towards the lights, things are going to get brighter and brighter. So a little yellow and red, nice warm orange. And this time I'm getting pretty close to my fire shape. And also you can kind of overlap some of that orangey brown as well. That way it just kind of helps with that glow feel. And then I'm just remembering as I move down into the ground, I'm keeping with those nice flat strokes. And then up in the sky, it's going to be bold and kind of flaky. And I like to have a lot more of this color near my fire, more so than my tents, because usually fire is admitting more heat than a tent would, unless your tent is on fire, then you should probably get that looked at. <laughs> but 
you generally want more of that color near your fire. I am going to highlight the ground just a little bit more around the tent area, but not too much. And if you do happen to go a little bit much with that, you can always go back in either with the brown or you can use a little bit of your uh, blue mixtures to kind of help take a little bit of that away. You can fix just about every, everything if you just let it dry a little bit. And I'm just going back and forth just a smidge. Just finding that happy place. But once you have that in there, then you have to let your canvas dry. And the best way to let your canvas dry is to stop putting paint on it. <laughs> um, I do highly recommend though, it is important to give your painting a break. If you kind of keep messing with a wet area, it's not usually going to get better because the more you kind of mess with it and mess with it and mess it with it, it gets overworked and um, it usually doesn't move in the great direction. Usually it goes backwards. So let it dry, get up, walk away. You can always come back and adjust later. That's usually the best time to adjust your paintings. So once it's dry, then what we're going to do is we're going to come back in and we're going to work on some of these details. So I'm going to be using my medium sized brush, my bright, or if you have a filbert, that works just as great. And we're going to start off with the tents and fire. So I want to take some yellow and we want to warm it up just a bit. So I'm going to take just a tiny, tiny amount of red and we want to kind of make like a, either a French's mustard color or as I like to call it, a Velveeta mac and cheese color. Now I'm not a Velveeta mac and cheese fan. I'm more of a Kraft Mac girl, but it's just one of those colors. So you kind of want a nice warm yellow out of it. And you want to make sure you mix enough of it because we're going to lighten up some of it. <laughs> so make sure you mix enough. And then you're going to take a little bit of that and move it to a new pile. And we're going to add just a bit of white to it. So now it's going to move from more of like a craft matte color to more of a butter color. And not like margarine butter. This is more of like the good old home style butter. And with that butter color, I'm going to come in and I'm going to lay out the base coat for my tents. And I'm going to add in the fire shortly after. So if you're working on the fire side, you can go ahead and start filling in your shape as well. And this is also going to help out with more of the glowy look that we get from the painting because now we have what, like our lighter portions. And I'm going to take just a little extra white on my brush for the tints and I'm just going to lighten up towards the center of my tents just a little bit more. So I got those fairly well lightened and I want to use the same color, nice butter color, so white with that warm yellow and we're going to fill in our fire. Now even though our fire is like this teardrop shape, I'm not letting it be like a perfect teardrop. I'm just kind of roughing up those top edges to kind of give it the look of flames. 
and you kind of still want them slightly pointed up and they're not too drastic otherwise it will look like an explosion and we're not going for an explosion here unless you want an explosion we're trying to go for more of like a nice fire and not like a giant bonfire because that's dangerous because only you can prevent forest fires but um we're just kind of like a nice tame fire So once we have our fire base in there and you have your tent base in there, we're going to add some details to the tents. So I'm going to be using um, more of like an orangey, yellow orangey color, so yellow and red. And we want to kind of add in the bedding down at the bottom of our tent. Maybe there's sleeping bags and backpacks and other stuff in there. And I'm showing you on the larger one first, so you can see it a little bit better. Um, but we want to do this to both our tents. I'm also adding a little swipe of color towards the top of the tent as well. Just to kind of give it the look like it's glowing from the inside, like there's a lantern in there. And mine's just a little bit on the yellow side. I'm adding a little bit more red to it to kind of orange it up a little. But for my far away one, it's not going to be as orange. It's going to be more on that Velveeta mac and cheese scale. I also use that sharp edge of my brush to add that kind of supporting line. It's not in the exact center of the tent. It's a little off center to kind of give that support. So now I'm taking that nice Velveeta mac and cheese color. I'm going to add a little bit of red to it just so it pops a little bit better. And we're doing the same thing, but it's not as detailed because it's a little bit further off in the distance. Now, if you are on the fire side, we need to add in some kindling. So I'm taking some more of my brown. And if you still have some kind of like that orangey brown, awesome. If you need to make a little bit more, just remember it's your yellow red with your burnt umber. And I have a little bit more of that burnt umber added to it. So it's a little bit darker and I'm using the sharp edge of my brush and I'm just kind of doing two lines and I'm pulling inwards and bam, you got some fire or not fire. <laughs> you have some wood for your fire to burn. There you go. And then I'm going to rinse that out and I'm just going to take a little bit more kind of yellow white and I'm going to kind of lighten up and highlight the ground around my fire and a little bit near my tents. So we're going in with that nice kind of butter mixture, just slightly highlighting it. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush, just a little bit, a little goes a long way. But we're just adding a little extra lighting. If you add too much, you can always go back in with some of your other ground colors just to take it back, but just a little at a time. So the next thing that I want to add is the smoke coming off of the fire. And usually I let the people working on the tent side do this. Um, because usually the fireside peeps are going to be working on something else. So when you go to do the smoke, you want to be using white with some of your ultramarine blue, so that dark blue. And you want it kind of on the light side. And you don't need a lot. I got a lot on my brush, so I'm giving it a little rinse. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it to kind of help thin it out. But I'm also wiping the extra off my brush onto my paper towel because we're going for more of like a dry brush effect. And I'm gonna start just above my fire and I'm just going very, very lightly. And then you kind of have to commit to the line and just kind of swoop it off. And then you can kind of accompany it with some other lines as well. And because I am doing a dry brush effect, it's not gonna deposit a lot of color onto the canvas, which is good because you want that effect 
when you're adding smoke because it's kind of transparent. But you want to make sure you're not going too much. Otherwise, maybe you're burning something that's really hydrated and full of moisture. I'm just kind of swooping it down, keeping it nice and light. And it's very easy to get carried away with this step. So make sure you kind of tread lightly. I know I almost got carried away with this step. It's very easy to do. So while our tent people are working on that smoke, because smoke follows beauty. Yes, I just called you beautiful. Um, so while they're working on that, if you are on the fire side, you are going to be working on putting in some logs. So for that, I'm going to be using just that same medium brush and black. And I'm coming up here on the horizon line and I'm using the skinny edge of my brush to just lay in a far away log. So this is not that big at all. It's kind of skinny. And it's just kind of like on the other side of the fire. And once we have that log in, we're going to add in the larger one. And we don't want it super slanted. We just need it slightly. So it's not really straight. It's just a slight slant. Sometimes people tend to put it a little too slanted and it looks like it's kind of like up on a hill, which is fine. <laughs> but you want this log definitely to be on the thicker side because it is closer to us. The bigger it is, the closer it is to you. Um, but you also want to make sure it's close to your fire and not like redwood size log. So once you have that in there, then I'm going to come off right off the bottom of the log and we kind of want to create like a cast shadow. So I'm just solidifying my log just a little bit more. And now I'm just coming off that bottom. And for the cast shadow, it's very important that you're keeping your brush nice and flat just to kind of follow along with the same kind of flatter strokes that we've used on the ground the entire time. Now I'm giving it a really good rinse out. And if you are on the tent side, you get to add some stars. So I'm using the back end of my brush and white paint, and I'm just using it to kind of dot it in. And same thing with little hints of yellow or some embers that are flowing around. When I do add in those embers though, I want to keep them kind of closer to the fire and they're going to kind of be a little bit more sparse as you move away. So once you got some of those embers and stars in there, our fireside people are going to work on their people. So I'm going to show you here in a second um, my breakdown of the shapes of painting people because um, sometimes it can be a little intimidating, especially if you don't normally paint people. So it's going to be fairly easy. So we want them sitting on this log and on this kind of separate sheet, I'm going to kind of show you that breakdown. So you're going to be using just black, kind of like you did with the log. And I'm just creating my log right here. My paint's a little dry, so I'm just adding a little bit of water with it. And on top of the log, I'm going to kind of create two kind of humps. And if you kind of treat it like you're uh, making like a lowercase m, that will help. Um, so I'm going to start and I'm just going to hump. And that's going to be kind of like from the waist up to the shoulders. And I'm going to create another hump for my other person. And you can always widen out the shoulders if you need to. And then on top of that, I'm going to make another little hump for the heads. So now we have heads and then you can kind of go in and if you need to adjust the shoulders a little bit, just to make them look a little bit more like people. So they're just sitting on a log together. And if you need to, you can always use that small round brush as well if you feel more comfortable. 
So now I'm going to do it for realsies. And I'm going to use the round brush for it just to kind of show you how it works. And you definitely want to make sure you kind of thin out your paint a little bit with water. And I'm still using black paint. And I'm going to create the hump. There's one. Fill it in. And then I'm going to add in the other hump. Now he has a partner. And then I'm going to add in the head. So it's just slightly smaller. And I'm just adjusting. Now, uh, one thing that we should add to make it look like they're actually sitting on <laughs> The log is you kind of come out from the waist and you just add like a little just a slight little hump for the leg because they're sitting on the log so I'm going to do it here just a little bit of that black little hump gives the illusion that they're sitting there so I'm giving my brush a really really good rinse out getting all that black out and what I want to do next is I want to use some of that mac and cheese yellow that we got going on and I'd actually suggest probably using a little bit of white with it just to kind of make it a little bit softer it's gonna be a little bit brighter but softer at the same time and you want to kind of highlight the edges of the logs and the people that are kind of facing towards the fire so for my people because they're the, to the left of the fire you're gonna highlight the right side because the fire is to their right and towards the top. So you're going to highlight towards the right and towards the top of our forms. As for the log that's further away, um, you're going to highlight more of the left side of the log because the left side is closer to the fire because the fire is to the left. And if you get a little carried away, you can always go back in with a little bit of black to kind of calm it down a little bit. So now that we have our people in there, then we can worry about putting in the next step. And the next step is going to be those trees and bushes. And that's going to help kind of frame the scene and push everything else back. So I'm going to bring up my little board here soon. Just to kind of give you the example. So when we put in our trees, I'm using that medium sized brush again. And because we have those trees that kind of frame the piece, they go from top to bottom. So you can start out with kind of a skinny trunk at first, and we're gonna be using just black for this. I'm using a little water to kind of thin it down so it's a little bit smoother, but you can use the skinny side first, but as you can see, it's really skinny. So kind of give it a couple passes just to make it a bit thicker. You do want it thicker, that way it looks like it's closer and big. But it goes all the way from the top to the bottom. So you're not going to see like the tippy top of the tree. And that's okay. And from there, I'm going to angle my brush out and use that skinny edge to kind of lead out some of the branches. And as you can see, they kind of they're a little wobbly, but they're at about like a 45 degree angle going down. They're not like straight out. That way they're not too drastic. And once you have enough branches, you don't need too many, just need a couple that are more towards the top. Then you want to add in the foliage. And I kind of use the fat bit of my brush to just kind of mush it down. And they look like blobs at first, but as long as you angle your brush in the direction that like the branches go, it will kind of give you some nice kind of tree looking foliage. 
And because we're not like really close to the tree, we're not going to see all the pine needles and stuff. They're going to look like blobs. So it kind of works in our favor. And I let them kind of go off the top of the canvas because we're just kind of cutting it off up there. And then at the base of our trees, we're going to put in this kind of nice bushing. So if you need any areas to kind of cover up, you can kind of cover it up with some bushes. And I'm using that same kind of splotching and dabbing technique with the edge of my brush. A little extra pressure. And it does look a little blobby, but it turns out to look like bushes in the end. And I'm just kind of filling it in. And you want it definitely more filled in towards the bottom. And as it kind of grows out, it's going to kind of loosen up a little bit. So once you have that down and I highly suggest practice first practice helps but if you feel confident enough you can go ahead and put it right into your painting so I'm starting first with the trunks so top to bottom and if you need to you can go back in thicken it up And we do one on each side. So if you're on the left side, your tree is going to be to the left. And if you are on the right side, your tree is going to be to the right. And they work pretty much the same way. And I think this kind of helps just, it pushes everything back and makes it together as a picture, like a whole. And um, if you kind of think about it, it's like you're looking at it from a bear's perspective, <laughs> creepily watching some campers around the fire. Um, but right now I'm just putting in those little branches, using that sharp edge of the brush, keeping them nice and light. They're not super detailed because we cover them up anyway. And you could leave them like that if you want a dead tree. That's an option. But then I'm just using a good amount of paint to add the foliage on to those branches. Give it more of that pine tree feel. And remember, it's okay if it's a little blobby. Blobs help. Oddly enough. <laughs> so I'm blobbing that in there. And once I have that in there, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to add that those bushes at the bottom of the canvas. And I like the bushes to be a little bit higher towards the outer edges and then they kind of slowly get a little bit smaller as you move towards where the canvases meet. And if you're worried because your silhouette of your trees and your bushes aren't popping off as well, don't worry because we're also going to highlight them, and that will really kind of help them stand out a little bit more. I'm just adding a couple little flyaway leaves that aren't necessarily attached. And don't forget to finish off your edges. So now that I have those in there, I'm going to just give my brush a really good rinse off, get all that black out of my brush, and I'm going to add in those final highlights. So for those final highlights, I'm going to be using um, the warm yellow with a little bit of white. That way we have a nice buttery color, just like before. And you want to make sure you mix a little bit more of it. And you want to take a nice sharp edge. So I'm holding my brush nice up and down. And this is with the medium brush. And I'm highlighting on the side that's facing the lights. So if you're on the left side, you're going to highlight the right side of the tree. Whereas if you are on the right side, you're going to highlight the left part of the tree. And you're just kind of hugging that side. And then when it comes to the bushes, you're doing that same kind of bushy stroke, 
but you're going to kind of hang more towards the tops in that same thing, where if you're on the left side, you're hanging towards the right, so your top right. And if you are on the right side, you're hanging towards the top left with those highlights. And this is gonna really help you kind of pop those bushes forward and it's gonna kind of bring it together but also separate it out a little at the same time. But it just helps incorporate the scene just a little bit more and add that extra detail. So once I have those highlights in there, um, that's really the last step. If you need to, you can always go back in and touch up any areas. I'm going back in and touching up uh, some of the ground areas. So it's totally up to you um, at what point you want to finish up a little bit. But if you need to go back in, tweak some things, that's perfectly fine. If you go in a little bit too much with your highlights, you can always go back in with a little bit more black and take it back. But once you have those finishing touches on your painting, then you're done and you can give yourself a nice pat on the back. You survived. If you're doing this with a partner, high five your partner because you did it and you survived the painting and you have some nice little hampy campers. And if you did it to yourself, you can high five yourself and get like a nice good clap out of it because you did it. Pat yourself on the back because you did a good job. Um, anyway, I really want to thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day and your week to uh, paint some happy campers with us. I hope this helps and I hope we get to see you in future videos. Don't forget to share your artwork, show it off to the world because sharing is caring. Have a good one. Bye-bye.